Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous videos, we have successfully built our virtual assistant. If you have not watched it, I suggest you watch it. Now, we will understand how to build an API. As an API stands for Application Programming Interface. It is a collection of communication protocols and subroutines used by various programs to communicate between them. A programmer can make use of various API tools to make its program easier and simpler. In essence, an API acts as a communication layer or the name says an interface that allows different systems to talk to each other without understanding exactly what each other does. First, let's understand about Flask. As it is a web application framework written in Python and is often referred to as a micro framework. It is designed to keep the core of the application simple and scalable. So, let's begin our journey by understanding about CRUD operations and then build a registration form. It's exciting, right? So, let's get started. So, we have successfully built our first project which is a virtual assistant. You can include much more conditions in it such as we have made it to just greet us, we have, send, we have made it to send an email, we have made it to open a web browser, tell current time. We have also made it to scrape the data from a web by using requests and beautiful soup. Now, let's understand the other important concept which is important in any programming language to build any application. You see the term API because yes, so in this project we are going to build an API in Python by using a very well known framework which is Flask. So first let's understand what is an API and why do we need to build an API and what made Python to be much, much easiest because when you go for Java, PHP, to run any application we need to have an API because if you see the symbols over there, you see the shopping cart, you see music symbol, messaging, playing video, Wi-Fi, games, everything right. Yes, because let me make it simple, API stands for Application Programming Interface. To make it more simple, when you are using any application on your mobile phone, what does that application connect? First application will connect to the browser because you cannot use an application online, offline, right? To send, any, to send money, you need to have internet. To just watch a movie, you need to have Netflix or Prime, you just need to have internet and data in your mobile phone. It's simple, right? Even to play some games, you can play it offline, but they need to ask you to enable with an internet. That's why you need to download some additional packages. In the same way, when you use an application on your mobile phone, first the app connects to the internet and it sends data to the server, right? What does that server do? Then server retrieves the data, that data, interprets it and performs the necessary actions and it generally sends back to your phone. That means, Whenever you are hitting any web application or using any mobile app, you are requesting something, you are getting some response. Request and a response. Right. So, to make it more simple, API is like a waiter in a restaurant. What does waiter do? Because you go to a restaurant, you want something, you just need to order. You can't go to kitchen and tell the chef, right? You want this order. You will sit there, you will you'll ask for the menu. Then waiter comes, waiter will take your order whatever you are requesting and waiter will give that thing to the kitchen because your kitchen is part of the system that will prepare your order. So, your waiter is like a communication layer acting between your system that is chef and the customer. So, between you and your chef, he is acting like a communication layer. So, he will work continuously, right? He will go to kitchen, give your tell your order and the kitchen will prepare your order and then waiter comes to you and he will deliver your order. He will goes on, he will does the same thing until and unless the hotel is open. In the same way, when you are using any mobile application or any web application like playing games, watching movies, mo doing some transactions and anything. Even if you want to book a train ticket, what happens, you, you can book it in Paytm or you can do it in GPay, but automatically they will connect to IRCTC because IRCTC is the main database where they are having all the train details, so they need to communicate. So, this will ask, they will just request it. They provide an API and they will accept it. They will just make the request and you can see the details over there. That is the reason you book train ticket to any other app. Again, you need to log into your IRCTC. Without having IRCTC credentials, you cannot, your train ticket is not confirmed. 
so that is how apis are really working in real time scenarios that is a very simple so always remember api is like a waiter in a restaurant that's how he just comes to the customer takes orders from the chef or the system something like we are requesting and we are getting a response so that is how it is a collection of communication protocols and subroutines by various programs so that is the reason even if you are searching for flights something like you even if you are booking an order even if you are updating your profile deleting your profile everything everything comes in the part of an api whether we are using a web app or whether we are using a mobile app everything is part of an api without api we cannot do anything that's where even facebook twitter google they provide an api so that you can build your own applications that's what if you are try trying to scrape the data from twitter where you can analyze the data that's where twitter provides an api so that you can analyze it so that's what sentiment analysis works if you are having if you are able to scrape the data from it if they provide an api and you can access it that's what even see whatsapp business business work i mean something like for business purposes you can you can see if you are using razer pay or if you are now booking tickets through any app like book my show or anything they directly contact through whatsapp telling you that this is your movie time you might have experienced it right yes it's all with the help of apis so that is how it's simple and it's nothing but your phone data is completely exposed to the server no api provides a layer of security your phone data is never fully exposed to the layer so that's where simple instead they communicate with small packets of data whatever you are trying to give so that is where always we have mainly four operations which are generally called as crud operations or curd operations even when you are working on database you create a table you write data into it you update it you delete it. so that's where we call this methods are create read update delete which are generally basically of getting information and you are trying to update it you are trying to create new information you are trying to delete it so that's where we have these four methods which are get post put delete these are main methods in an api and we'll be working on each method in python how do we use this http methods because these are these are generally web methods right i mean when you are trying to access any particular web application or mobile app we are just trying to pass this so that is how we generally have multiple types of apis like uh, rest apis or soap apis where when i say soap it is simple object access protocol which is with the enterprise world where they are having some stricter contract based usage but generally we have rest apis where they are for public that's where we use this something like fetching data from the web and which is very much easier to our http methods like get post put delete something like this which looks like where we are using i mean this is our client where we are trying to get it we are asking some information this api will contact to the database whatever it has in info it is having information they provide it and that is written in the format of json or xml so that is how whenever you search any web something like if you suppose let me show you a simple example suppose if i open my web browser and if i type amazon you see you can when you are hitting amazon you are able to see you get this information right amazon.in and prime video when i click amazon.in you are able to see this information completely that means you are requesting and this web page changes right if you are having any offers automatically this banner will change if you are having any festivals now this automatically banner will change and when you go to click on this go to view page source you obviously have this html css styling and let me just uh, maximize it because it's all about these stylings whether it can be of uh, simple html css is basic for any web application when you see front end and when you have the data in the format of json we include bootstrap over here we have so many stylings so stylings can be updated it only depends upon how do you try to make your web page visible and when i say json data it is similar to a dictionary because dictionary is having keys and values that means let me show it here where yeah so here now i have first paint and now t response start see you see colon here that is this is specific your key and your value wherever you see such kind of method that is returning in the format of json because json stands for javascript object notation it's completely web data is in completely in the format of 
javascript object notation or xml format that is how we are able to see the result on our screen whether you see mobile app or anything that's how the general things work with an api so that is the reason every application you see now is is need to have an api so that they get the request because building a web application communicating with a server and resulting the data resulting the data from the database it's all about with the help of an api that's where we write apis or we we dynamically make sure our api communicate that is where these four methods play a vital role which is get post put delete so first let's understand about each one of them a very simple example i have given about here suppose if it is a bike rental app where you are able to book a ride something like rapido or any kind of bounce whether you want to own yourself bike so you just see whatever the bike you see and the location you see you just hit enter or you go for rapido you choose the location you just choose the location and you see the nearby nearby driver and automatically it will assign so that's where that is a front end api and when you see it is checking the id management storage that means the location depending upon the application if it it access the location it access the nearby drivers in the same way it access the location if you go for swiggy nearby restaurants and everything then you see that will be contacted to the database and when it's in the format of web app, web app you can open the same thing in web application but most of the applications if suppose if you go for swiggy you see the same kind of interface in mobile but when you go for web application that will be a bit different it checks with the nearby restaurants and it allows the suppose if it go for kiosk that means you can see each and every information over there and depending on it so that is how everything is checking with the format of an api so when the front end or whether you see the management and the storage every application needs to have an api and that's where it it is something like a communication between your server and your client that is very very important so the same thing if you wanted to build an application using python we need to understand how can we use which have some better known packages we say or better known libraries to build an api which will start with flask so first let's understand how do we build an api in python by using flask we will follow very simple methods because we need to directly install flask it's not available built in we'll first install flask and we'll see because flask is a well known framework written in python and it is one of the popular web framework where we people generally call it as micro web framework when i say micro it doesn't mean that it is not used to build any application but the word micro means that your whole web application has to fit into a single python file because when you go for django because even with the help of flask we have so many applications you see netflix you see airbnb you see reddit you see uh, pinterest you see twilio so pinterest is one of the well known social media application right it is one of the largest site created using flask and even if you go for twilio so twilio is basically a cloud communication platform and airbnb so these are all applications built using flask only so that's where we generally need to understand with flask and with django we can just make sure build any applications so it only depends upon how do we write the logic within it and how do we make sure we build that particular kind of application so it's all about these four methods the four methods include get post put delete so we just need to understand how do we obtain information about a particular resource how do we create a new resource how do we update a resource how do we delete it so these four operations are generally called as cut we'll be understanding how do we first install flask and how do we generally run the application by using flask because when i say micro it is like it doesn't mean that it is lacking in functionality it only aims to keep the core simple but extensible you need to build everything because when you go for django it provides your customized admin panel and it provides you everything but when you go for flask you need to make sure what database to use you need to take your own decisions that is the reason if you are aware of netflix when you are trying to make payment suppose if your free trial is done if you wanted to make a payment it will automatically navigate to the web page it doesn't do the payment in the mobile app that's where the api is requesting to the server so that is how these flask applications are built and you see if netflix is one of the main video platform where you can have 
so much of uh, video storage over there. So that doesn't mean that Flask is allowing only little storage. No, that is wrong. So first, let's understand how do we write a simple application using Flask and how do we run our function not in the local shell but in the browser because that is nothing but routing. Because if you enter a URL, you are just hitting that and you go to another web page, right? Something like this. So when you open, when I say Amazon, you are in the home page. When you click on mobiles, you see the URL, it is into slash mobile phones. So this is how the things differ. That is generally called as routing. Now let's open our IDLE and first install Flask. Then we'll build a simple application using, build an API using Flask so that we'll run our application not in the local system but in the browser because Flask will provide a local URL which is 127.0.0.1 is to 5000. In the same way you can test the thing and we can make it to host. And with the same logic, we'll try to build a simple registration form. That, that is how first you need to understand the definition of an API and we can because everything in the world is an API because API is something like an unsung hero. So we'll build an API now. So first open the command prompt as we have used the environment so for this application it's not it's not needed when we go to building a registration form we'll build an environment again we have already created a virtual environment we'll just go for that so first we need to go for pip install flask when i give pip install flask it should automatically download because you can run python from your command prompt so just go for it pip install flask it should automatically be installed just make sure your internet connection is available then it is done so pip install flask so automatically flask will be installed so you can see that flask has been installed and we can see some of the applications when you see that is being installed with flask you can see like jinja 2 and see for me it is requirement already satisfied because i have been already using it but when you go for the first time it will automatically show it will just make sure that uh, see flask in the c user's name and click it's dangerous jinja to work zig markup safe what are all these just make sure that we need to first understand what are all of them and what made your python environment to install such things because it's generally when you go for wsgi jinja 2 is a web template where you need to communicate with the markup safe i mean just make sure if you want to communicate with your web pages and markup safe is basically how do you communicate and how do you request a server. So that is the reason it is works markup safe, Jinja to templates. These are very, very important when you're communicating with your web page. Because as your code base grows, you are free to make the design decisions. You can implement advanced patterns by using say MySQL or SQL. And that's where this WSGI, that is works, that is web interface pattern, where we can just make sure some applications are built very easily only when we just have all the supporting files even you can go for python 3 point any version so better to go for python 3 version only because we already have some depreciations for python 2 version now the updates have been stopped for python 2 version so but you can see some of the applications still running in python 2 that doesn't mean that uh, they are not interested to move to python 3 it's only that they wanted to make sure they have some dependencies with that so that is the reason we just need to understand how do we use this so we have seen here this jinja2 because jinja2 is basically a template which we need to run with the flash because workzug is complete is basically a comprehensive web application library and this jinja is basically used for templating language for python developers that is something like to create html xml or other markup format so this Jinja2 and Workzug will communicate with the Flask and make sure that with the help of the markup language. So that is how the supporting libraries will be installed with Flask. And now when you give pip freeze, you can see the you can see all the list of libraries being installed or packages. You can see when you give pip freeze, you can see now Flask within it. A B C D E F. Just check in F. You can see the Flask within it along with the Jinja2. So now we'll just run our first python app first uh, api by using flask so first let me open my ideally and i'll write a very simple code so that we can run the application not in the local shell but in the browser so for that i'll just create a new file so file new file then what we'll do is 
will first save it with any name make sure you save it in your desktop location instead of root location because you need to search here so just i'll save it here i'll just save it the name first flask that means i'm just trying to create a simple flask application so for that i'll just make sure from flask so i'll just write first flask application so that what we'll do is we'll try to run a simple function not in the shell because you should not run that thing in the shell because your interactive shell will communicate with your python interpreter only but we should communicate with our operating system so that we should run that thing from command prompt i'll show you the difference so first let's write from flask we just import flask and we'll create a flask object so for that reason i'll just give the name as app is equal to flask of we have seen what do we mean with dunder name because every python function i mean python program is saved with main function because as main is very important even is seen even in c programming language this is nothing but we are creating a flask application object that means which contains data about the application and also methods that tells the application to perform so with the help of this variable only whatever you write we write c d anything but we will start using this variable where we root the application where we run the application only with this name that's where we use the debugging mode and everything so it creates a flask application object so that it tells so that or which it contains the data about the application basically so which contains data about application and methods let me write some very simple way so that i'll write comment here or we can just make it uh, by using triple quotes it's up to you and these are also methods that tell application to perform that tell application to do certain task that's what that certain task will be where we try to get the information or update an information that's what we'll be doing it first we need to understand how do we create a simple flask application so we'll start routing here so where we need to use the decorator at the rate dot route r o u t e that means if you see when you open a web browser when you are clicking this particular mobile tab that means your your routing is gone from amazon dot into when i see amazon dot in that's it i have clicked the logo you can see the extension reference is equal to navigation logo that means you can see this is done by the front end developer who who builds with some styling whether he may use html css is very minimal in any web page where they go for some javascript stylings and even they can use react and some other bootstrap libraries so basically but when i click a particular tab or a particular icon it should display to another web page so that's where the back end framework comes into picture where we build an api so that our front end and back end gets communicated that's what we are trying to see now and that is done by routing so you can give any routing so first let's give a simple slash that means when my application runs you can see that provides a local url and that will be run only in your system so we just give some simple slash you can see when you gave slash it is referring to your uh, root location files so i just close this and so after we giving routing that means this is generally called as routing that is the reason i'm just writing comments at any at every point so it will be easier now we define a simple function whatever your function is it's up to you it depends on your interest something like you provide a routing like so i just gave define my function name is hello so you write the keyword def and function name is hello and you give parentheses that means you did not def define any arguments within it that is default there are no arguments in it if i write something like a equal to 1 that is default argument now we just try to give a simple thing like i just give doc string my first flask application that's what my doc string is because always remember never ever forget about giving doc strings when you're writing a simple function in the same way my function hello should return the same thing i give my function is this is my first flask application or something like a demo app whatever because this is the response you should see not in your local system and not in your interactive shell but in your browser 
it is fine so when you call the function you could see the result but this is not the thing now we are just making it to route at the rate app dot route because app is our flask object now create because every python file is saved with saved with main variable i just write the condition if dunder name dunder name that is if dunder name equal to dunder main because every python file is saved with main name and my application should run so app dot run here we enable a mode called as debug equal to true because we are making debug is equal to true that means we are debugging during environment because what do you mean by debugging in your programming that means you are trying to trace out the errors the same thing it creates some debugging symbols used to provide metadata about the current executing if debug is equal to false it is for deployment to a production server so we give true or false so generally debug is equal to true should be given so that we can try to trace out because we are running this in the development because we should go for production right development we are testing so we just make sure that we run app dot run and we provide debug is equal to true so that's it because true t is boolean that means the debugger allows executing the python code from the browser because we just it is just if you want to run any application in the browser make sure that is hosted in a particular cloud whether it is your local system if you take your local system as a server you should have particular configuration for your ram and the server and you should have some security layers the same way that is the reason people go for using cloud aws azure gcp alibaba you have so many clouds over there it depends on your cost controlling thing so that is where our built in workzook development server it provides a debugger and jinja2 is a template where we just try to communicate with the web pages so that is the reason those jinja2 and workzook environment and it's dangerous environment communicating to some other web pages these are very very important while we are providing some structured patterns now it is fine now when we execute this code because generally you are allowed to run the code in the interactive mode only but when you execute this you cannot see the output because the main reason is we should run this particular cell particular script not from our interactive mode but from command prompt the reason is you are running your application it should provide you a url your python interpreter communicating with the environment variables cannot exactly give the url because you should directly run from the command prompt that's where the difference happens when you are running from the python environment that is interactive mode that is c users and the root location and directly from the command prompt you just observe when you hit on run module or function f5 you see restarted and serving with flask cap what is the app name first flask environment is production this is a development server do not use it in production deployment so that is different over there debug mode is on restarting it's so it's done but where is your output you cannot see it here right because your file is running as a simple script you should run that thing from your command prompt so open your windows explorer and just go to the location that is desktop where your file is just type cmd over there hit enter and how do you run the scripts from your command prompt just give your python the first variable is python that's what we have understood and what is your file name just give your file name my file name is firstflash.py hit enter then automatically your server will be loaded this is a production this is a development server do not use it in production deployment that is different right so use a production server for that that's where because aws provides another layers and azure because the code remains same then this pin is different for every environment i mean my system and your system is different and debugging mode is on and you can see flask is giving a url with this url you can see your result so what do you do you copy the url go to the web browser and paste the url over there and hit enter so you can see this is my flask flask application and if you want i can just maximize it right that's how you can see whatever the result you gave in your function return automatically it is giving you the same result that's what when you can see the same result in your command prompt see this is particular location and the request is 200 and even when you just refresh the web page automatically the request will be fetched and it will take some time to give the result see it depends on the environment you are providing and that is how every application is being run and if you just restart it it is giving press control c if i give control c again the status is different now what we will do is if i give any other url something like slash my name 
it provides not found that means you cannot uh, change the amazon extension right suppose if you give any other url for the amazon dot in another extension it will throw you something like amazon dot ineff something you gave some wrong extension it is giving you some different url right that's where it doesn't allow you to navigate to the web page because those are not present right that means they request that specific thing that is not found in the server if you entered manually please check spelling that means i want to change this extension if i run with the same extension i get my code and you can see the same request in your command prompt see status 200 response is okay 404 is resource not found because these are protocols 200 series 300 series 400 these are very very important and it depends when you are trying to navigate see and the time frame and the date exactly now what i'll do is i'll change the routing in my code because i want to just route with my name that means when i hit slash socket it should see it should provide me with the same result so i'll just make sure see i'll just again give control c because it has detected some change in our code that means it is reloading again and when i just reload the same web page it will just take some time because with that extension your result is not fetched because we have changed the code what we have gave we have given slash socket that means with slash socket you should see the result so i'll give slash socket and it should fetch it if it takes some time just make sure that you restart the server that is just give control z to come out of it and just give control c it's fine now when you see the result over there you can see the result but your code you have stopped running the you have stopped running the code right if you just make it execute it will take some time that means this site can't be reached that's what you see in when you open web page without internet <laughs> for the funny thing right that same thing happens here now run the code again python what is our file name first flash dot pi now you can see the server is running and the same url but with extension as slash socket i just refresh the web page now you should automatically see the same result what is the result we gave it should return that this is my first flask application there you go which taking some time let's it's not worry you just need not worry just open another web page again and provide 127.0.0.1 is to 5000 slash socket you could see the result over there in the meanwhile check the response if it's any error over there it's fine but it should provide you the result if you are having any issues that is slash socket and i'll save this and i should see it's giving you because i gave 500 right? it is 5000 that's the issue over there then automatically you could see the same result whatever you have given it's taking some time no worries it will just fetch you the result depends upon your environment and clearly you could see the result giving it over there so when you hit the url with slash extension you can see it which fine you just restart it again you could see the result no worries there is no error in the code you can just make sure you come out of it and hit enter that is python our extension is our file name is first flash there you go there is no error in the code if you have error in the code automatically it will return the error first it will it will not make it open the web page it is just taking time in the sense that means see now we got it because we are just restarting it again it takes some time that's what happens when the code is being changed by the applications because they ask you to restart the same thing is happening here so that is how we have just changed the routing and you can see whenever you change the result and when you just refresh the web page automatically you can see the status over there when you hit the every time the web page is run you can see the status being changed here and if you change it to another web page or open another document automatically the result changes so that is how we have just made the routing and when i just give control c see every time i have gave two clicks over there that means two times we are getting the same result so that is how we have clearly made our first flask application that is we have built a simple api using flask where we have just provided our routing and now what we will do is we can also create our own variables 
so that with the extension we can make our flask application to run and you will even we can make it to host in our public api so i mean public url that means if you can provide that url to your friend so that he can open it but now he cannot do it because this is running in our local system local system is different and running the same thing in public url because you can open amazon.com anywhere right but it doesn't mean that if you are building an application in your local system you should buy a domain you should host it that's where the difference happens now let's try to make sure we create and we add a variable to our url section and make sure that that is executed in the browser along with that we'll host our flask application on ngrog which is a tunneling server which is free to use you can see use that variable you can give that url to any person within a given specified time he can open the same result so that is a while testing also if you check the same thing it doesn't work out right you should run the same code and make sure you get that url so that is how we'll try to add a variable and we'll try to host our flask application i hope you have enjoyed watching it if you have liked our content please do hit like button and do subscribe to our youtube channel for more useful content and exciting updates if you want to learn such practical content at an affordable cost with microsoft certification and instructor support please register at academy.codenan.com you can also download app from play store as codenan never hesitate to raise queries in the comment section and please do reply with your suggestions for more practical videos we'll be happy to come up with it thank you